Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mo's and today's episode we're going to be taking a little look at this little product here I've just picked up. This is one of them Titan 4-in-1 um, um, multi-tools. You can get them from Screwfix Direct, that's the, that's the best place they're sort of advertised. This comes with a strimmer head, a brush cutter head, a chainsaw head and a hedge trimmer hedge, uh, head and also um, an extension bar. All the attachments should come with a harness as well. Um, these products, um, I picked this up and bought this myself. Um, I paid about £140 for this, uh, only because I've got my own hedge trimmer and my own strimmer. I wanted to, just to combine it all together. Uh, they do recommend that these pieces of equipment are not professional. They are to be used for occasional use, is what it says on the website. They're not a professional unit. I know lots of lawn care people that do use these, and they say, one, say they're no good, and some say they're brilliant. It all depends on the usage and obviously how well you maintain your machine. That's as far as I, 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 I get it. I've not seen too many of these Titans come into a workshop for, for repair, so I'm guessing they just get thrown away or people aren't buying them. Possibly, or, or, they're, or they're staying running and uh, they're good as gold. But also, some been reading some reviews on it, and some say for, they've had it for five years, no problem. And some say they had it, they, they pulled it first pull and it broke. Um, so we'll have a little look. Um, it's completely brand new, completely sealed. Still, we will put it up on the bench and we'll uh, we'll unbox it, have a look at it, get some fuel and all that sort of good stuff, and just see what we think of it. And then we'll try all the attachments to see how how good they cut. So without further ado, let's get down on dirty and let's check out this Titan four in one multi tool. <laughs> Okay, so Riley Boy just getting himself sorted out. He's got his stool, and uh, here's a Titan, as I say. This is the 25cc petrol 4 in 1 multi tool. It is the TTK 587GDO, is, is what it is, or D0, that's what it is. Um, as I say, it comes with the um, harness, trimmer head, chainsaw head, brush cutter attachment, strimmer bob, and uh, the power unit itself. It comes with a year's warranty as well on this machine <coughs> and, <coughs> pardon me. and as I have said I have seen lots of reviews on these I have. Um, yeah lots of reviews on here of people starting them up and what have you and doing it so there are other, other reviews you haven't got to watch mine or take mine for gospel but this is brand new um, that I pay for out of my own money um, from the revenue that I have created from from the YouTube channel so this will be used around my own place and what have you Thought I'd treat myself because I'm always, I'm always, yeah, I'm always running um, secondhand bits of kit. Never had my own new bit of kit. Don't do that sort of thing. Sure. But I just thought I'd uh, treat myself to a little tool, and we'll see how we get on. So we'll open it up. The box opens flat, which is cool. Yes. Yeah, sure. So awesome. the, the first thing we're going to take out will be uh, that's the extension bar. Um, so you, you can lengthen your your, your lengthen your reach. Cool, we got there. there you go. Yeah, don't, don't start unpacking stuff just yet. Right. No, you're right. No worries. I have. That was just on my loose, was it? How did you do that? Yeah. So that's the extension bar. That's the first bit we got out. What else have we got, Riley? Hang on. Let's have a look here. What's this one here? So this is a chainsaw attachment. Yeah. And it looks like it looks like they have actually changed the um, the end fitting on this. Uh, it used to have a double fitting. Um, on here with, with cogs. It looks like the, the new fitting has actually now been changed, which is quite quite good to see, because the other one did used to fail quite a lot. They push it all the way forward and it locks off, so that's good. They have changed the design on the saw, which is nice to see, because I have had lots come in with uh, failed ends, but I'll, I'll show you one in a bit what it looks like. Uh, we've then got um, the strimmer brush cutter attachment. Also get a little, um, what's that in here? In the bits of, uh, Bob's. Oh, you get your your petrol and oil mixer. That's quite cool. We'll look into that. So you got forty to one, uh, ten to one, and five to one. That's pretty cool. Uh, you get your strimmer attachment head, which is like a bobber as well, so you can you can bob feed. You get a few um, spark plug tools and a little tiny uh, maintenance kit there, some Allen keys. And as I say, you get a, you get your brush cutter or strimmer attachment guard, so you don't you don't whack your feet. And also you get your service operating manual. Yeah, well, I'll give it a read. Um, you get all that inside there, so that's pretty cool. Good, good, good. I quite like those. They're okay, but I don't tend to use those. I use something else, but I'll be showing you a bit later on uh, what I use. Daddy. Yeah. How do we do these? Yeah, that's how we do it, yeah. Also get a little harness, um, twin shoulder harness. They normally used to come with just a little tiny strap harness that goes over one shoulder. But these now have come with a, um, a, a twin shoulder harness. That's quite cool. 
I've actually got a steel one or Husqvarna one just there. That's one I'll probably be using. Got a little D D handle there, and also you've got a little carry case. Cool, that's cool. So you can put all your attachments into one and carry the whole lot in a little carry case. That's super cool. Good, good, good. This will come apart and rise. Find my knife, Riley boy. Here's my knife. <laughs> what else have we got? Let's have a little tiny look. Okay. Hang on, slow down. Slow down. I've got a knife in my hand. Go careful, buddy boy. I don't want to stick you with the old, with the old knife. Uh, what we've got here? That's a strimmer. So that's a strimmer head and a brush cutter attachment. So that's cool. I did. All brand new. Lovely. So we've got that. Um, then we've got uh, this one here, which is your um, head trimmer attachment. It's still got the same old attachment uh, linkage on it, which does tend to fail. I have seen these fail, but um, generally because the teeth get worn out. So it's got one of those, which is cool. You push that in, that goes all the way up to uh, different angles, and you can then cut your hedges as well, which is good. Just remember, it has got a gre an all-in uh, nipple there for greasing up, which I should be doing before I run it up anyway. I dare say there's some in there, but um, I like to do my own anyway. So it's got a nice hedge attachment. So that's good. Hang on, Riley boy, two seconds, mate. Yeah, I'm getting there. Let me put a knife away. You've got your brush cutter blade as well in a guard, which is nice to see. And then you've also got your, your, power, uh, your power head as well, which is um, 25cc. It's got a Titan um, uh, number there if you need to ring regard your, uh, regard your unit in case you have a problem. Uh, before starting, 40 to 1 mixing in these, that's what goes into there. It gives you operating instructions from cold start, how many times to do it. So it tells you all on there, but it also uh, shows you where your choke is on here as well. So read and digest all your instructions. And before you um, rev the beans out of this machine, I recommend you start it up and just, just let it run for five minutes. Just, just let it tick over and let, let it do its thing. Just let, let it break itself in. Lots of people, I think, this is where they possibly could be going wrong, is they get the machine from brand new, uh, they put petrol straight in it, and then straight away they just, they just put it to work. Um, like anything related to like strimmers, chainsaws, all that sort of stuff, you should always let them warm up well first before you uh, give, them the, give them the old beans. Especially with chainsaws, people just get them out of the vans, or disc saws, get them out of the vans, warm straight to work, and it just, just ruins them. A lot of heat transfer over the piston. So what I'll be doing with this one is get it all fired up, and then just let it run outside for five, five minutes or so, just to make sure the engine's well broken in before we give it any beans. So let's get all this lot cleared off the table, get it all, all sorted out, and I'll come back in two ticks. Okay, so now it's all been unpacked properly. Um, just because you're going to try and fit the first couple of bits, uh, keep these end bits so they keep all the, all the crud out of um, out of your uh, your shaft. So he's got the little tiny square shafts on me. So lots of lots of other attachments will fit these. I have found it comes with a little tiny Allen key somewhere. I have seen you get a couple of them, which you can put in your in your toolbox in your in your bag for your where you got your bits and pieces. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the strimmer attachment. There's a little tiny um, guard there for your razor uh, blade that, that cuts your uh, your bits and pieces off. We're going to put this onto here first. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look at this um, strimmer attachment. Now, I've just I've just unboxed all this lot here, as you saw, and there should be a little tiny split pin that goes through there. And I haven't I don't think I've been given one, but I have spare split pins in my shed. That's not a problem. So undo this nut here. Be left hand thread to undo this. So that just loosens up very slightly like that. Take that off. Left lefty loosey righty tighty, but in reverse. Take that off. Take that off. And then we can then slide, uh, take these screws out. That'd be a good thing to do, mate. Let's take these screws out. That's going to be a Torx bit, which is not supplied. So we've already supplied you straight away with uh, one tool that's uh, not not uh, in the box. We've not seen a, a Torx bit, but we haven't got one. Undo these little tiny screws. There's three of them to do, just on the head. So we can then attach the... Um, the strimmer guard to this piece of, uh, of this, to the shaft. So let me just get these undone. I'll come back when I've done that. Okay, that's them three screws now removed. And then we can then just fit this over top. That sits on like so. And just line them up with the holes. That go on there like so. And then those three screws I just took out, just line them up and sink them back in. I'll do one at a time. Just so I know they're lined up right. Just get them started. Can't even see the old now. There's one, there's two, it'll be about there somewhere. <laughs> 
So there goes the first one. Get that lined up and then do your, do your second and third one. Once you get two or three lined up, you get two lined up, you're, you're, you're away laughing, yeah? There's two and there's a third one. Just literally just starting them off to begin with, not screwing them down just yet. Just starting them off. You do get a flat-headed um, driver tool bit of this, but it's easier with a torx bit. So we can now screw that down into place. I'm going to leave the guard on the the, the little plastic um, bit on the on the razor. I'm going to leave that bit on there. Screw it down nice and tight because you don't want that coming loose. So that's the first bit done. Okay, now it's all been screwed down, we can now bring in the next attachments. I'm going to be fitting the strimmer head to this, so get this, um, the bigger one out of the two. You've got two collars. Uh, this one goes on first, which is a thicker one, and then this one then will then sit on top, because if you look here, you've got two little tiny um, dowels here and two grooves here, and that will locate and spin um, and lock in place there. So this one goes on first, doesn't matter where it goes, and then that one then sits on top, locks into position. You can then get your strimmer head attachment, and screw that down, and remember, it's opposite thread. Screw that down. And when you get to a certain point, you think it's on as tight as you can get it, that's when you use one of these um, screwdriver or Allen key bits. And all you do is you turn the um, screw head so that the Allen key will then sit all the way fully through the slot like so. And then you can then turn it a bit more to make sure that, that, that head does not come off. Okay, when you release that, that Allen key, you eventually that, that's free to move. If you don't do that, then there's a, there's, a, there's a risk, a possibility of the head could actually come off. So that's how you then fit that piece onto there. You can then turn the machine, uh, turn the attachment over, and then let me push this table back a, a touch so you can see what's going on. Hi. You can, because it is, and um, Riley Boys has come back. We can unscrew this little tiny um, attachment here, like so. Unscrew that, just loose, just slacken it off. <coughs> Remember that way. Slacken it off, like so. And then what we've got to do is take this cover off, and there's a hole just here, locating hole just here, and there's a pin bolt just here. And all you want to do is just gently slide this in. It may have to put a bit of grease on it, or a bit of two, or a bit of three one oil. Slide it in, and then release the, the cap. And then you'll see that lock into position. That now won't come out. And then you can then do that back up. And that's exactly how you do it not too tight uh, that isn't going anywhere it's nice and tight and that's how you fit your strimmer head now to fit your brush cutter head i should show you that separately okay so your brush cut attachment comes in a little tiny guard so you don't cut yourself which is quite cool all it does is just pulls apart literally so make sure you wear, you wear gloves if you're using these really do as i uh, do as i say not as i do um and just take the, the top cover off of this one okay the one with the two dowels and then your brush cutter will go on inside there and sits in very snugly and when you're looking for the two dowels now to come down and then lock and locate in their position which would be about there that's not quite sat down as low as i would like so a little bit tiny bit lower because it's on the edge of my on my bench that's why let's bring it down to there that's better and then these little tiny lugs will then lock down and locate into position and it locks it you then want to put into place your nut which again will be left hand thread. Just start it off and then get your Allen key and then locate that hole again I showed you earlier on. It's a bit fiddly. Locate the hole and then get use your, hold your Allen key and then with your, um, your spark plug spanner bolt they're giving you, you can then nick that up nice and tight because you do not want one of these coming off. Nice and tight. Take your Allen key out and then that's then free to spin. Now, as I say, they did not supply me with a split pin, um, which is something you need to have. There's actually a hole here designed for it. It's not here, I can't see it. Someone forgot to put it in, unless it's dropped on the floor, but I, I can't see it anywhere. So I have my own split pins. Um, I would highly recommend not using this bit of equipment without a split pin in there. All the little tiny pins you get um, from um, for holding trailers, tailgates down, that's got to go into there. Okay, I will not be using this until I put a split pin in. But as I say, I've got lots of split pins here, which I can just put in there and just, just tidy that up. So highly recommend not using that without a split pin on it. And again, there's your brush cutter attachment. Um, all spins freely, as it should do. No problems at all. 
Okay, so the next bit of kit we have up is, um, without dropping everything down on the floor, which is probably gonna happen anyway, we've got the, um, the chainsaw head. Um, comes with anti, anti vibration um, sponges on it as well, which is nice to see. That's where your um, your chain oil uh, goes into there. Um, we've got actually, do we have a brake already? I think we do. Let's have a little look. This is live, but don't forget, this is not me mucking about. I've actually got a broken fuel line, an oil line, already in here. So this can go back. I've actually got a broken line in here. I don't know if you can see that but mine's already broken. So, so there's no chance that mine will ever um, um, suck up any, any oil because the oil um, pipe is actually split on mine and broken. So I'll either, I'll either go back, it has got a warranty on it. There it is there, let's see. Um, that's already knackered. Little tiny filter on there as well. That's a terrible shame. I might put my own fuel line on. It is under warranty. I don't know if I've got any spare. We should wait and see. I'll just have a look to see how easy that is to get, get to that. I might maybe just put my, my own line in there, but there you go. That, that's actually broken already in there. In fact, I'm going to pull it off. There you go. That's, that's broken. So that's no good. Um, so double check yours. Um, mine was broken. Um, it comes with a chain on it. Now these chains... Which way around does that go? That goes that way around. Yeah, the chain's on, on the right way right around, that's cool. Now these chains are a bit of a safety chain on these. They do tend to have every other tooth missing and they do tend to bounce about quite a lot when you're when you're cutting. Um, but uh, they're okay. The um, the way to, to move it around is you have to you have to push this all the way up, all the way down, sorry, all the way down, and then you can then tilt the head to whatever angle you want to cut at. Thank you, Roddy. And just just move them around like that. So that, that's quite a good design. You can't you can't move them or shouldn't move them when you're um, when you're operating the machine. So that's got a swivel head on it, which you go all the way up. It's a two hand operation, and you should always op you always use that when the, when the machine is turned off. You should never do it when the machine's actually running. So I'll be doing a little fix on that straight away before we operate this bit of kit. But again, to put this bit of kit in, all you got to do is uh, with the, with the clamp un undone, slide it halfway in, then pull the pin out and it slide all the way up until it locks off into position. It's got, it's got to find that little tiny, um, little sweet spot. Uh, can be about there somewhere, there it goes. Lock it into place, do that up. Nice and tight, because it is a chainsaw. And that's your chainsaw head um, attached to this, um, to this piece of equipment. Now, if you're pruning quite high up, um, you may need to put the extension bar on um, you just got to bear in mind the weight um, ratio on this because that would be quite heavy to put the, the extension bar on. But to put the extension bar on is just as simple. All you have to do is, let me push this tail back a bit more so we can see a bit, bit, see a bit better, is put your extension bar in, this blank end, both, both got the same ends you see. So this blank end will go in first, like so. Undo that so it locks into position. And it'll just find its, find its little, little sweet spot there it is there, that's, that's gone in. In fact, now one comes, oh, there's a hole. Oh, there's a hole there, beg your pardon. The hole's right on the other side. That now locks into position. You can then do that up, like so. That goes up nice and tight. And then, you can then add the second part of this piece of kit to this um, machine. Pull the pin out again slide it into position, let it lock off into position, and then do that one up. And now you've got roughly about 12 feet of, uh, of pruning saw there available, uh, which is quite, it, it, it is quite a size. There you go, that, that, is, that is quite a length. Okay, so you can also put your extension bar in as well. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Good. So that's pretty good. Let me collapse it down and then we get onto the hedge trimmer. Okay, so the last attachment I've got um, is the hedge trimmer attachment. This is the main reason I got it, because I've got quite a large hedge in my garden. And this is the main reason why I actually got this piece of equipment. It saves me up and down ladders and what have you. <clears throat> to operate the head, you just have to squeeze both levers in together and then tip it, tip, it, tip it to the desired angle that you want it, okay? And it goes all the way over, so it's quite nice. It'll do, it'll do pretty much anything you want it to do. And don't forget, all these heads, they all come with a grease port. So don't forget to grease your ports up, okay? And then all we're going to do with this again is literally, <coughs> push the table back, literally just slide the end attachment in, locate the hole on the side, and it'll slide into position. 
there it goes, it locked, it heard it go click, and then do that up. <clears throat> apply a little bit of grease on there, it'll help. Well, what you can do is you can just apply a little bit of grease um, into the, the end caps, just into these. Okay, just put a little bit of grease in there. Every time you put it on, you'll, you'll be applying grease, keep it nice and clean. So that's the head, that's the, um, the head trimmer attachment. That's all now on, which is good. It's a double-sided um, head uh, head on it, which is good. The blades look relatively good for what they are. I've seen, I've seen better blades, um, but as I say, this is a home user machine only. It's not a professional bit of equipment. This is home user, and I'm only gonna be using it for around the home anyway. Uh, mainly just cutting Riley's hair and what have you. Um, so that that's pretty good. I've got to fit the um, the handle on next, and I'll show you how to fit that. It's relatively easy to do. So let me get this head from my head off, and then we'll uh, have a look at the handle. Well, onto the next step is going to be um, the handle. It comes with a little D handle, and um, we're going to be using little tiny Allen keys on here, which is cool. They give you an Allen key. It would have been nice to see them give you a long reach one like this. That would have been great for getting into there. But no, they give you a little tiny um, Allen key. It's not. A, it's no. It's not a bad thing. They give you. They give you a tool to do the job, right? It's just you got to muck about and fiddle in here, don't you? So this comes off. This little tiny arm here. That's to go and rest against your leg when you're strimming. It's a bit. It's a bit of a safety feature. Um, it's not very just to, just to um, rest against your leg. It is designed for you not to be too close to the other end of a power unit and too close to the uh, the cutting end as well. So all we have to do to separate this is undo these little tiny um, Allen bolts. That was a bit tight. They separate. Now, I'm not sure if these are adjustable. There should be a little hole underneath, I think, um, which will tell you roughly where it needs to go, but different people's heights um, do have an effect on where you put the handle, in my opinion. So that comes away. Let's just tip the machine upside down. So there you go, that's what I mean by adjustable. There are, there are three different holes here which you, can, which you can locate it on. So the best thing to do is just to get your, um, your device, tip it up and hold it, I mean just put it on the nearest hole and just hold it on there, just so it sits into position, which would be, is that the first hole? Yeah, there. So there's the first hole just there. And all you want to do is guesstimate when you're, when you're cutting how far you want to be. So that's a little bit close for me. I would like to be a bit further away because I'm, I'm quite tall. So I'm going right to the end. I'm six foot two. So I'm going right to the end. There's only three holes you can have it on. Yeah, it'd be about better for me. Because of, because of the swing, that'd be about right for me. So I'm going right on the very, very end. So it has three locating holes underneath. And then all you want to do then is just slide your, your D handle on top. Marry up the holes. And then just do them up. So they're being done up. And then what we're then gonna do is, I'm then gonna get some petrol and I'm gonna mix up some 40 to one. Now I'm gonna show you how I mix mix up some fuel. And I will be doing a video very shortly on how, how to mix fuel correctly. Um, like a pro, pretty much, how I do it. I'm not saying I'm, I'm a professional, but I, I do lots of mower repairs and two-stroke repairs. And I see lots of people coming in with having uh, the wrong fuel mixture, too rich or too lean. And I'll show you how I mix fuel. Uh, especially for this bit of equipment, 40 to 1. So that's all now done in position and where it should be. That's absolutely perfect for me where I want to be. So um, nice and close to my leg. So let me clear the decks. I'll get some petrol up on top and we're going to mix up some 40 to 1 fuel mix. And then that would be the correct fuel for this machine. We'll put it in and then we'll try and get it far up and see how it goes. Okay, so this is how I mix fuel up. Um, different to other people. Other people use these, you know, these different fuel containers and bits and pieces. Some people require more fuel than others. And I tend to mix up just what I need. I'm not a commercial bloke, so therefore I don't need to mix up uh, a great deal of fuel. Um, I've got my um, fuel can here with my uh, premium 97 um, fuel in it. And all I'm gonna do is just gonna put that onto there. It's got an anti-gurgle um, tap on it. Now I'm gonna be mixing up 500 milliliters, okay? That's roughly what I, what I tend to use. I don't tend to use much more than that. And 500 millimeters would be roughly one tank's worth, okay? 500 millimeters is also the same as a Coke can or a Coke bottle, that sort of thing. So I've got my measuring device here. I'm gonna go up to 500 mil. So just put the old spout into there and fill that up. To 500 mil which is going to be there bang on so i know that's exactly 500 mil okay now how much oil do we need to put into here to make 40 to 1 that's the question 
You can Google it, do whatever you need to do. But what I do, and I mix a lot of different fuel up, and the best thing that I find to do is to go onto, um, onto your phone, okay? If I can get it to power up, would be good. And I've got this app here. It's called Gas Oil Mix. Click that up, and then it then brings up onto your screen um, what mix do you want. So I want to mix um, 0.5 of a litre, but I want to mix at 40 to 1. Oh, 40 to 1. 40 to 1. That tells me for 500 mil, I need to put in 12.5 mil of oil. If you want to mix up um, 40 to 1, but you want to mix up 10 litres, because you're a commercial bloke, you've then got to put in 250 mil. Okay, so that tells you exactly what it is. So if you go to the pump, you put in 10 litres of fuel, you know to put in, you've got to put in 250 mil of oil. So that, that's, that's how I do it. So I'm making up 0.5, which is 12.5 millilitres of oil, okay? 12.5, let's remember that. I get my oil, two stroke oil, and all I then do is I use one of these, you know the sort of things you have for the kids, you know, cow pole or Nurofen or anything like that. I use one of those. It comes up in five mil increments. And all I do, I just tip that up very slightly. You can measure it right off. So there's five. Get it just right, because it is quite critical. So there's 10, and then it also comes with, what I quite like, a 2.5 as well. So drop that down to 2.5, which is gonna be there. So that's had 12.5 millilitres of oil put into that machine, into that, oil, into that petrol mix. So we now know that is the exact right mixture. There's no, there's no discrepancy there. Exactly 500 millilitres, and that's 12.5 um, mixture of oil. Give that a little tiny shake. Don't go too mad because it is oil. It will like to expand and what have you. Give that a bit of a mix up. That's vitally important as well to make sure you're using the right, uh, to make sure the oil is mixing with the petrol. Bit of a mix up. And then we get the machine back on top of the bench and we'll be good to go. Okay, got a petrol mixed up now, which is cool. What I want to do first off though, before we do anything else, is just double check that the fuel lines are correct. So that just, pop, that just pops on out. And we've got a fuel filter on there and we've got a return as well. That all seems to be good. Nothing broken inside there, because what we don't want to be doing is pouring petrol into this machine and finding out um, we've got a broken hose like we did on the chainsaw end. Get your funnel, if you've got a funnel. If not, just make one out of, out of paper or something. You know what I mean? You can, you can, you can improvise. Get your funnel and we're going to pour um, roughly the 500 mil should all go in here. That's why I only mix up 500 mil at a time. It might be a little bit short. That's as far as I want to go. And we've got yeah, about, about 25 mil just, just under left over. So got a little bit spare, but that can go back into the tank after we've finished um, mixing it up. So that's why I only mix up what I need. Let's put the fuel cap back on. And screw it down till it's well well seated. Don't go over tightening it, just well seated. <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is just let the machine sit up and let that fuel filter now suck the suck the fuel up, just get, get a, a bit of fuel into the system. And then what we're going to do is tip the machine up on its side ever so slightly and then just prime, <laughs> prime this bulb six times. That's now got fuel inside it, okay? But how we've got no fuel inside the machine. So it says here give it six. Another six, two, three, four, five. Six. We now have fuel inside this system, and this system is now ready to start. What I'm going to do is take it outside now, because you should be starting up two-stroke machines inside the, inside the shed. Uh, we'll take it outside and we'll start it up and see if it starts. And then um, what we'll then be doing is let this machine just run just for just for three or four minutes on its own, um, just on, on tick over, just to make sure the machine is broken in. So let's go outside and start the machine up. Okay, so now we're outside in the garden and uh, we're going to fire this machine up. As I say, very straightforward to start it. Let's just hope it does start. It's already has six pumps. It's already got, it's already got fluid inside the carburetor. I'm going to do it two more because it has been sat for two or three minutes. And then put it onto choke. Choke is all the way up. Um, choke off is all the way down. So you have choke on. Turn the machine on just here at, at this button. You've got a stop and you've got an on button. And then give this machine a couple of pulls until you hear the machine fire. and then turn the choke off. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave this machine just to um, 
just to run all on its own. I'm not going to give it any beans at all, I'm not going to give it any throttle. Just let that machine run and then let, let the uh, cylinder get all lubricated up and what have it. It may cut out because they don't like being, they don't like idling for a long amount of time. But I want this machine to be well broken in and well lubricated before I give it any throttle at all. So I'll be back in two ticks once the machine's been broken in a bit. Okay, so now this machine has now been running for around about five minutes, okay, solid. Um, haven't turned it off, it's been running lovely. A little bit smoky, but it is burning no oil. Don't forget when you use this equipment, you must wear some safety glasses of some description. And I've got these little tiny earplugs as well, which I use. So I'll put them on now, put my earplugs in, and then we can then get on and trial it. And I'm gonna fit the um, attachment, uh, strimmer attachment. Now you can actually fit the attachment on these with the engine still running because the blade is not actually spinning because it's on idle. So what we can do is just get the, uh, the strimmer attachment, slide that in, pull the pin out, there it goes, it's just engaged. And that wasn't spinning because the head isn't now spinning, you see. So now we can now do up this, uh, this attachment here, do that up nice and tight. So this engine's now been running for a good five, five to six minutes. So let's give it a little test. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to come and set you guys up. Now I have actually not long um, done my garden, so there's not a great deal of strimming to be done. There's a bit under the swing set here to do. I can do that. There's a bit just over here, but there's not a great deal to do. Because so I did cut my grass just yesterday. I was hoping to actually get the strimmer in um, yesterday, but uh, it wasn't available. If your order was screw fixed um, direct, the cutoff time is actually four o'clock in the afternoon, which stops you from getting next day delivery if it's not in stock. And mine wasn't in stock. So um, I'll have to wait until Sunday, which is the next day. So I'll snip into the shed. Hopefully you won't lose my sound. Hopefully the sound will stay up. So I'm going to come and grab this harness. This is just here. Now I might be a bit big for this harness. Um, I'm not quite sure we'll see. So hopefully the sound didn't just drop out. I'm going to fit this, uh, this harness on. I've got my own Husqvarna one, which is uh, generally a bit better for um, the heavier setted person like myself. Let me just adjust this camera up a touch so we get a bit of a better view of what's going on. That's it, that's a bit better. Don't want to keep moving the camera around. So it comes with a harness as well. There's a bit of a crystal maze thing going on, I'm trying to figure this out. But ideally you want the, um, the uh, this side here, I'm right-handed, wants to be up against your right leg. So that goes on. And you have a shoulder strap. Make sure it's on properly. I mean, a bit of adjustment required, no doubt. Yeah, look, see, look, look, we don't supply it for people like me. I have quite a big bus. Let me go and get my, um, my Husqvarna one. It is a uh, much better, give you much, much more room. This is designed for someone who uh, eats salads. Uh, no good to me. Let me go and get my Husky one. It's uh, designed for me. I'm on a diet, you know. I was going back into the shed. Hopefully my sound won't drop out again. And let me get my Husky one. That is a bit more of a heavy duty a harness. What I used to use when I was commercial, doing do it commercially. That's a bit better. That's it. It's caught up. So this is my husky one, which is a lot better. I used to cut grass commercially. I have my own husky jobby. And what have you. For those that don't know, I used to cut cut grass on a commercial side as well. And uh, they cater to a slightly bigger man, which is me. So I'll do that up and then chest harness grip as well, which is cool. I'll go and get the machine and bring that over. Now, some say you shouldn't start these machines with the attachment on, but um, if you're out in the field, um, you're not going to take the attachment off just to restart it, are you? Um, you're just going to pull it down, pull the cord up. So I have seen some videos saying you shouldn't attach, shouldn't run these with attachment on. I don't see that as being true. Turn the machine on. It shouldn't now need any choke. It should be completely warm. It's been running for a little while. So 
we go, first pull. And now this little tiny clip here will clip onto my harness, like so. Push it around and touch. And now you can see I'm at the right height, my elbow is resting on the top of his top of his top of his trimmer. And now you can squeeze that trigger and work away. And you can see that where I've set my my uh, uh, handle to on my harness is right now up against my leg where it should be. There's <coughs> a bit down here to do. Just get in there. Over top. So I don't have a lot to do because uh, <coughs> I did stream yesterday. A bit around the other side there. Let's bring the camera around. <coughs> a bit around here to do. Just here. So we'll get on do this little bit just here. One thing I have forgot to do is actually take that little paper clip off the um, off the blade, so it cuts the new nylon. I haven't actually done that. That's my mistake. But you can see how how with the right harness you can use a bit of equipment at ease, and there's no need to be revving the machine at full revs. No need for that. You don't need to do it. You only need to work the machine as much as it needs to be worked without giving it the beans. That's only about half throttle. I'll go all the way. Doesn't need it. Not when you're just strimming little tiny bits up. So that's the um, strimmer attachment. I'm now going to move over and we're going to put the um, hedge cutter attachment on. And then we'll go from there. Don't need a harness for that because you're obviously working a bit higher up. So don't need a harness for that. We'll put the hedge trimmer attachment on. I'll be right back in two ticks. It's got an easy start, Paul Paul doesn't need it. It's important to tip the blades in as well as you're cutting. does a pretty good job. I mean, the advantage is you can then, with the machine still running, you can tip the blades in slightly. Okay, and now you can work up the top. That's a bit steep for me, so I'm quite tall. So I'm going to come up just a touch. About there. And now you can bring this up the top. That's pretty cool. I like that, what it is. Now I won't be using the chainsaw end because I've got to, repair, got to replace the, uh, the, the hose on it, am I? So yeah, cool, I like that. Okay, so there you have it. That's the unboxing review. Um, first impressions on the Titan TTK 587 um, GDMO is what it is. Um, apart from having the chainsaw attachment oil pipe broken, um, most people will just take it back or the, maybe some people won't even notice, okay? But uh, I noticed, um, so I will try and just fit that myself. It's, it's a thing I do all the time anyway, so it's no biggie for me. Uh, if the power unit fails, then um, I should be taking it back within the year. So we'll see how we get on. So that's that. Um, just please bear in mind, um, before you leave the comment, um, although I'm welcome to any comment, this, in my opinion, is not a professional grade piece of equipment. This is for home user use for occasional use only, as described on the website. It's not described as a tool that you can use and run to do um, professional jobs, you know, day in, day out. It's just not designed to do it. 
Um, seen lots of reviews on these already, people saying they're no good and what have you, but as you can see, it done exactly what it said on the tin, apart from the, the um, chainsaw pipe being broken. But Screw Fix has got a year's guarantee on it and warranty, and they will just change the entire unit over, no questions asked at all. So it, it's as simple as that, just take it back if you want to do so. I didn't try out the head, the uh, brush cut attachment only because I don't have no brush to cut. Um, I didn't try out the chainsaw attachment only because, um, again, um, the all the all filler um, pipe had broken, but the hedge trimmer and the trimmer attachment worked very, very well. One other thing to take into consideration, in my opinion, is the chest harness. Um, I am quite a big bloke. I, I'm fully aware of that. Um, however, it would be nice to see um, a bigger harness for the uh, for the bigger person. That harness wouldn't even go wouldn't go around my ankle. Um, it's all right for someone a bit smaller. And a bit and a bit thinner, but uh, I'm not your average Joe bloke, I suppose. I am quite a large sort of fella, so that's what it is. So that's why I've got my big Husqvarna one, Husqvarna and steel. They all make good size harnesses for good size people as well. So just bear that in mind. If you are going to be buying one and you are a, an over the size average sort of Joe, then that harness is not going to fit you. You may want to upgrade to a bigger harness or ask Screwfix Direct if they do a bigger harness for you, or doing just a shoulder, a shoulder strap would be just as good. You can just put a piece of string around there, something along that line, just put it over your shoulder. You can make one up, do whatever you want to do to make it work um, but I would recommend using um, the harness it does um, make it easier for you to carry and to maneuver the machine you shouldn't have to take the load of the machine whilst you're working it you should let the harness do all the work um, one thing I did also display there in the video is that you shouldn't also have it running flat out all the time only give it as much throttle as is needed um, that's why these sort of machines do tend to burn out quite quick because people just start them up from brand new get it out of the box possibly the wrong fuel mixture as well and they give it the beans from from the second one i let that machine warm up for a good five minutes before i even touch the throttle and then whilst i was trimming i only ever give it the throttle that it requires it does require a bit more throttle when you're hedge cutting and that sort of stuff but it's just something just to bear in mind also when you're hedge cutting tipping the machine on its side just bear in mind of your fuel levels your fuel filter is generally up one side of a tank and being right-handed, generally it, it, the fuel filter would be at the top of a tank and all the fuel at the bottom. So if you find your machine is bogging down or cutting out or not running properly, it's because your your fuel tank is, is probably under quarter full. Just make sure these fuel tanks are kept over halfway full and you shouldn't have a problem. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little video of um, mixed mowers doing this Titan um, four-in-one uh, multi-tool. I certainly have. It's a now new piece of kit I've got in my arsenal just to go around my garden and a few little jobs here and there, but nothing over the extraordinary or nothing professional in any way, shape or form. I'm going to be trying to pick up a few other bits of equipment from Screwfix and Toolstation and what have you, not affiliated at all, um, just to try and pick up some of the equipment and try and do some reviews on this stuff as well. I like to do that sort of thing, so I'm buying new tools for the channel all the time anyway, as you guys and girls know. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Mixed Mods. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, give us a subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and uh, tap your notification bell. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mods very, very soon. But until then, people, more importantly, don't forget, take it easy.